Can you imagine having a child that's born that's never gonna walk, never gonna talk, always have to change their diapers, always have to fix their hair, always have to figure out what's wrong with them. Can you imagine living that life 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Tifton uh, is 18 years old and he was born with delayed myelization. When Bethany um, was born, she started having her delays about six or seven months old. And so she got in therapy at eight months. Then we saw Tifton started having seizures about when he was eight years old. And then that was the downfall, really. I consider those the worst things ever. So uh, he started out with little seizures and then they became grand mal seizures. And he was having them about three a day, three grand mal seizures a day. And the worst part was that he couldn't be happy. He had seizures like if you uh, walked in his room to get him up from bed or if he got excited, he'd have a grand mal seizure right there. So you're like, how can you have your child not be happy? You know, that was the worst thing. Your child to be happy would have a seizure. Now they're teenagers and it's really hard to entertain them. They don't have a whole lot they can do. They're confined to their wheelchairs. Most of the time when they're out of their rooms, they have to go be in their chairs. They take supervision all the time. You can't leave them on their own. They have to be hand fed. They have to be hand bathed. They are both diaper dependent. We have to change their diapers, which getting them in and out of their chairs to change their diapers become a task since they've gotten so big they both weigh a lot and they don't like to stay in their chairs all the time so taking them from the chair to the floor to change their diaper then taking them from the floor back to their chair is a very physical strenuous task i know that i needed a break when megan was here and i had a lot of support of families I had a lot of support from Easter Seals, but we didn't have a respite home. This is a safe haven for families to bring their children. We have trained staff that love these kids that have been with us since we opened. It's a wonderful place. Ty Christian has, was born with neuromuscular scoliosis, Down syndrome, and um, as early as three weeks of age, he was, he had congestive heart failure because of the um, pressure. Uh, he was, he didn't have the ability to swallow, and um, that resulted in congestive heart failure, failure and aspiration pneumonia. When Megan was born, um, I was 39 years old, can you imagine? Didn't know how to be a mother. This was my first child. Didn't know how to be a mother, especially a mom to a special needs child. So it was just, I mean, it just opened my eyes. But if I had those 14 years of my life to live over, that Megan lived with me, I wouldn't change anything about her. You know, in all my travels, I'm not aware of another facility like Megan's house anywhere that I've ever been. Uh, it is definitely uh, a need. There's a need there and that it was identified and we've come up with this incredible solution is just uh, says so much about the founder and, and the folks that have supported it through the years. Um, nowhere else are, are services like this available to the caregivers out there. Macon's house does provide us with a level of security, a level of comfort that we can't get anywhere else because our child requires so much attention, specialized attention, that he, uh, we can't get that from just anywhere. But Megan's house has everything that we need. And so when we send him to Megan's house, you see, we can re rest, we can relax because we know that he's in good hands. Yeah. He's uh, uh, something that a lot of people don't realize is that uh, you get tired. You, you have to stop. Whenever you're so focused on a child with special needs, you, you kind of don't look at each other. And for him to spend time at Megan's house gives us time to stop and talk to each other and refocus and set goals just to get to know each other again, <laughs> just to have that 
few moments maybe to have dinner alone uh, to get a good night's rest. Um, it's such a blessing to have them in this area. If you've never walked this walk, don't have a special needs child, or don't have one as part of your family, um, you really have no idea what they walk through 24-7. This is why we need Megan's house. These families need a break. As a parent, it means a lot. Um, even though that, you know, my children do not have disabilities, I know what I would want for them whether they do or they don't have disabilities, what my standard of care is, and that's what I expect at all three of our locations. Um, and then also, because Carol and I have come to be such great friends, um, you know, it represents Megan. It is her, her daughter's legacy, and so I'm very respectful of that, and it means a lot, and so I try to protect that and um, protect the name and protect, um, you know, making sure that we're providing the most quality care that we can and that um, we're being good stewards of the dollars that we receive. When uh, Megan House first opened up and everything, we didn't use it because we're really independent with our children. And so we're like, we don't want anybody else to have to go, you know, put this on anybody else. And Carol, she was like, Dawn, you're gonna fill out these papers and you're going to use Megan's house. So she actually met me and uh, for breakfast and we filled out the papers and we used it for our first trip in like 10 years together. We went and we went on a Valentine's Day um, trip, isn't that right? And five days, didn't have to worry about medicine, didn't have to worry about you know, changing diapers, and we're about getting up at six o'clock in the morning. If I could say anything to anyone, it would be to the families of special needs children. Not to give up and to realize what an awesome place Megan's house is. Please consider, if you've never used it, please consider calling us and using Megan's house because these families need a break. And so many of these moms don't want to take that step to call and, and because they feel like other people deserve it. I don't want to take up too much of the time or I'm just not ready to let go yet. And I know it's hard. I know it would be for me to let Megan stay at a respite home, but it has to be done for, for our sanity, you know, and to have some time away for us so we can come back and be energized to, to meet that responsibility again. We always, once we walk through the door and the ladies there start saying, Hey, Tiffany, hey, Bethany. They love it. Tiffany and Bethany love it. You can tell they, they're getting more and more comfortable with it. And that just, you know, it's, it's reassuring once you see the people there interact with them. And in fact, that's written all over his face. When we first drop him off, he's always smiling. And in fact, Immediately, he turns away from us, and he focuses on the nurse and the toys. And he wouldn't do that if he didn't feel safe there. He, did, he wouldn't do that if he didn't like it there. In fact, he wouldn't do that if he didn't love it there. I often, uh, having uh, the opportunity, the privilege of, of going to Megan's house and, and understanding what they do and seeing clients there, um, I think about the unique kind of person it takes to care for a special needs child. And the fact that once you're on the job, there's no such thing as a break. It's not eight hours a day. It's not even a 12 hour shift. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And yet the people that do it wouldn't have it any other way. She went with me everywhere. She was my shadow. Uh, that's why I believe Megan's name is so well known in, Al in Albany. And I believe that's why a lot of people don't know me as Carol Holland, they know me as Megan's mom. My husband's and my prayer had always been, God, don't let her outlive us. Because who would take care of her? Research indicates that families um, who forego respite care um, often end up 
with some really negative outcomes. Um, children end up being abused or neglected, and that's not always intentional. Um, but then also, just because of the strains of raising a child with special needs, um, the divorce rates are higher. Um, you know, there's financial pressures. Um, there's pressures of making sure that other siblings have th their needs met. And so um, what ends up happening often is families will say, I can't do this anymore. And they will request out-of-home placement for their children. And currently in our society, and in Georgia specifically, there are no real out-of-home placements for children with disabilities because we believe that children should be at home with their families. So without respite care, these children would really be, and these families would really be in a very dangerous place. The support we receive from them, you can't put a value on it. Without Megan's house, we would be in trouble uh, in a number of ways. For example, our child requires so much attention throughout the night, it's seldom. It's, in fact, it's been years since uh, either of us have gotten a good night's rest, I should say a complete night's rest. But we don't mind because he deserves this kind of care and he certainly needs it. So we're oftentimes running very at the exhaustion level, I should say. But Megan's house provides us a means of, of resting and getting ourselves re-centered. And so when we come back to Christian, you see, we're sharp. We're able to provide him continued care because we are able to get rest. For us to be together, you know, just the two of us is really re-energizing. So I have like that to look forward to, to get through the days. That's why without Megan's house, uh, I wouldn't even have that to look forward to. I think I'm very thankful for all the donations that's given to the um, to Megan's house. And I know there's other families that are just as thankful as I am, if not even more too. So I'm very, very, I, I can't even explain how thankful I am for Megan's house. So, and all the volunteers and the workers there, everybody. Megan's house is there. Megan's house is such a blessing for parents who um, are looking for the security of knowing that there is care for their child. Um, for them to be present in this community should be such a reassurance for parents who are in this type of situation. Uh, whether it be an emergency, whether it be just for much needed rest, uh, for recentering, and let's not let's not omit the fact that he loves it there. Whenever you have a child who can't communicate, Thai Christian cannot communicate verbally. Uh, you can tell the type of care he's received by he, the way he reacts to the caregiver. Whenever we go to pick up Thai Christian, he lets us know by his actions that he wants to stay. <laughs> he really enjoys it there. Please consider Megan's house. You don't know the difference you're making in the life of a family with a special needs child. You have no idea. And just do it from your heart. Uh, just being able to stay at Megan's house for 24 hours gives these moms and dads a break that they so desperately need. All of the money that we take in in Albany stays in Albany. You see the house, it's on Palmyra Road. Uh, you see people, our kids come and stay there. And it's just, we need your support. We need your support. I would just say thank you, first of all, um, that I have a heart of gratitude because without support, we couldn't continue this. So thank you to the donors that have made it possible. Um, thank you to the families that have trusted us with their children and have told other families about us and have um, helped to spread the word about our, our services at Easter Seals. Um, I would say thank you to our staff for the work that they do that, that um, provides those loving arms and those tender hands and 
you know, that watchful oversight that these children so desperately need to give their parents a break. Um, but I would also say we can't stop now. You know, there are more children every day and there are more families every day just being diagnosed, just beginning this whole lifelong process and or just finding out about Megan's house and Easter Seals. So, you know, we've come a long way. We've done a lot with very little, but there's still a lot of work to be done on behalf of these families.